Hi, this is Brad Keefley, Managing Director of Alaskans for Sustainable Budgets. Welcome to the weekly top three, the top three things on our mind here at Alaskans for Sustainable Budgets for the week of May 9th, 2022. The weekly top three is a regular segment on The Michael Duke Show. The show broadcasts on both Facebook Live and YouTube Live, as well as via streaming audio from the show's website, weekdays from 6 to 8 a.m. I join Michael weekly in the first hour of Tuesday's show from 6.25 to 7 a.m. for a discussion between the two of us about our three issues. We post the podcast of our discussion following the show on the Alaskans for Sustainable Budgets Facebook, YouTube, SoundCloud, Spotify, and Substack pages, also on the Alaskans for Sustainable Budgets website, as well as the projects page on national blog site, medium.com. You can find past episodes of the weekly top three also at the same locations. Keep in mind that in addition to these podcasts, during the week, you also can follow and participate in the discussion with us of these and other issues affecting Alaska's fiscal and economic condition by following us on the Alaskans for Sustainable Budgets Facebook page and through our posts on Twitter. This week, because of the time we spent on them, we only covered the first two of our top three issues. First, Michael and I discussed at length our take on the status of the budget current through the Senate's actions on Monday. And second, in light of what has happened this session, we discussed what the prospects are now for a long-term fiscal plan. We will pick up the third topic, the current status of Santos Pica project, and whether there's a silent but sitting behind their recent positive statements next week. And now, let's join Michael. Brad Keithley is our guest, Alaskans for Sustainable Budgets. He comes on board with us this morning to talk about the weekly top three, which include the big one. I think we could probably do almost the entire hour on this segment alone. The big one has to do with the uh, budget that came out of Senate, uh, the Senate yesterday with the huge marathon floor session and everything else. And the headline reads, full PFD, $5,500, uh, full PFD plus an energy rebate check. But don't start spending all that money yet. Um, it's uh, lots of stuff still to occur. Uh, Brad Keithley, our guest. Good morning, Brad. How are you? Michael, I'm doing great today. How about you? You know, doing good, doing real good. So um, what uh, what say you um, as you watch this and look at this? Um, I mean, I was a little shocked. Again, I had some I had some con phone conversations over the weekend with some people down in Juneau, and there was a lot of uh, gnashing of teeth and, and uh, ripping of clothing, and people were just up, upset about everything that was going on. And yet, in the long run, we see this amendment by Shower come forward and getting the support of 10 out of 20, so barely a 10 to 9 vote. Um, and, uh, and people are like, really, uh, where does it go from here? So what, what say you on this? Well, the actions on the PFD itself yesterday were, were, were good. The, uh, uh, Senate, as you say, did vote 10 to nine for, uh, a full PFD, a full statutory PFD. It would be the first one since, uh, uh fiscal year 2016, which was the 2015 payment. Um, and um, and I think it I think that's a positive development. Almost everything else that went on around it, I think, is 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 problematic. But but getting the full statutory PFD, I think, is a uh, is is a good step. And those who voted for it, uh, I think, ought to be applauded. The rest of it um, uh, is, I, th I think, Roger Holland may have inadvertently had the quote of the day uh, about what was going on. His quote was. Uh, in response to uh, an argument from from Bert at one point about you know whatever was on the floor at the time, whatever amendment was on the floor and was su sustainable, Holland uh, Roger Holland had this to say. He says it doesn't have to be sustainable. This budget is just for this year, and that's that's a quote I think that we've heard at some point every year since 2012, since we first started uh, going down uh, the, the the rabbit hole of uh, of, of spending more uh, more than we have. Setting aside the PFD and looking at, at overall spending, separate and apart from the PFD, uh, we, are, we are spending more, even in this year, even in the year of, of record high oil prices, we are spending more uh, than we have non-PFD uh, revenues to cover. That is, if, if you set aside the PFD, don't include any of the, uh, 
uh, of uh, of the PFD revenues uh, in support of the in support of the budget. Exclude the PFD from spending. Uh, we're spending more. The budget that that the that the Senate appears to be ready to approve, uh, based upon the votes yesterday and uh, and and more to come today, uh, is spending more than we have non PFD uh, revenues uh, to pay for. And it's just I, I'm that to me is the is the headline of the story. We've got the governor proposed um, his FY twenty three uh, budget amended budget was four point six three billion dollars. Uh, yesterday, uh, adding up all of the spending that Senate Finance had had approved, adding the additional spending that got approved uh, through amendments on the floor, we're now in excess of $5.5 billion uh, UGF spending, which is roughly $900 million more, 20, uh, nearly 20% more uh, than, what, uh, than what the governor proposed. And the real story, the real spending story, isn't even FY23. The real spending story <laughs> is what's going on with the FY22 supplemental. Right. Millions, uh, hundreds of millions of dollars in the supplemental budget for this year. Right. I, well, for FY22, they're, they're spending an additional. The FY22 budget ended up somewhere around $4.6 billion uh, enacted at the end of last legisl legislative session. The supplemental, if you add everything that the that the Senate has thrown in, if you add what the House has proposed to throw in, the supplemental is one point four billion dollars on top of that of that uh, four point six billion dollars. It spends out all of the additional revenue that we're going to have for this fiscal year, FY twenty two, the fiscal year we're in right now. It spends all of that out. Uh, uh, without saving, without saving a dime of it on 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 a wide variety of things. So I think the story of yesterday. I mean, from from the standpoint of the PFD, it's a good story. From the standpoint of everything else, it's a horrible story. And and it goes on both sides of the aisle. I mean, we even had one amendment yesterday a after after the after the FY twenty two supplemental does back pay on uh, on on the the the. Uh, school bonding on paying off a uh, uh, right what, what school what indebtedness state school bonding school bonding, in, yep. school bonding debt after it adds additional money uh, on top of on top of the education budget another sixty some odd million dollars on top of the education budget that was passed in the house they tried to remove it in the senate the senate voted to retain it yesterday after all of that one of the amendments was to add another six hundred thousand dollars in spending to pay for diving boards for one of the Anchorage for one of the Anchorage schools and that passed. Yeah, I mean we're we're just we the, the story of this year is is in part the PFD but the real story of this year from the standpoint of fiscal sustainability is they can't help themselves. They can't stop themselves. It was Republican votes that passed that $600,000 for the diving board. They they just they, they can't they can't stop themselves. And, and that's just, I mean, it's just, it's a, it's a, it's a tragic story in the sense that, uh, that, that, you know, we're never going to get to fiscal sustainability if we can't hold back uh, the spending. And yesterday, I think demonstrated, set aside the PFD, I think yesterday demonstrated that, that no one's in control of spending. It's just spinning out of control. Well, as, uh, as, as Roger Hammond says, it doesn't have to be sustainable. The budget is just for this year. We got the money. We're going to spend it. Ha, uh, well, good for us. Roger Holland had a, a, the terrific quote the other day of basically, you know, when I got here, we we're in a fiscal crisis and the solution was cut the PFD and add more taxes. And here we are flush with money, more money that we know what to do with. And the answer is cut the PFD and create more taxes. I mean, that that's the bottom, you know, so what's the deal? Uh, Natasha von Imhoff next to him, he said, you know, said on the floor, we've got more money than we know what to do with. Bert Stedman is quoted in saying, after we've done all these things and paid for all this stuff, we got $4 billion to play with. I mean, these guys, I mean, that's what it is. It is the power-hungry madness of spending all this money, making sure that the people don't get any of it. In fact, doing everything they can to try and strip the PFD out so that they can control more of the money for spending. Well, forget the PFD. Just set aside the PFD. They spent all the money. They spent all the FY22 money uh, uh, through through the supplemental. All of the additional revenue that we've got out of oil prices, they've spent it all. 
uh, in the, they're spending it all in the supplemental. Look at FY23, Roger Holland, it was Roger Holland's amendment to add $600,000 for the diving boards. Now, you know, somebody who, somebody who says he's a fiscal conservative and I, and I, I'm sure he is, but when push came to shove, that money was sitting there, right? It's like loose change in your pocket. Um, and, <laughs> and when push came to shove, it was his amendment to add $600,000 after we've, after we've fully funded, retroactively fully funded school bond debt, uh, after we've added another $60 million on top of the, on top of the K through 12 education budget, it was his amendment to add $600,000 more, uh, to spending passed by Republicans, uh, in the Senate, uh, to, uh, to layer that, uh, layer that spending on. So it's, it, it is disappointing. The, the, the PFD is a hugely positive news. Yes, we finally lived up, we, at least the Senate voted to live up to the statute. It's going to go to conference. We can talk about, you know, whether it's going to survive conference. But, but yes, that's hugely positive news. But, the, but, but it, under the shadow of, of that overhang, under the shadow of what they did on the PFD, it just, it was, it was another outrageous day in terms of spend it, spend it, spend it, spend it. Mike Shower proposed a bunch of, of, of budget cuts. I mean, in total, they maybe amounted to $5 million, maybe $10 million. Right. There were a bunch of minor budget cuts. But Shower at the same time proposed amendments that would have you know, funded the Matsu Rail extension. We don't have the money for that. We don't have the non-PFD money for that. Fortunately, that one was defeated. But, but you, you still end up with the 600,000 diving board, the dollar uh, diving boards. It's just, it's a very disappointing, it, it's, a, it's a great day on the PFD side. It's a very disappointing day uh, on, the, on the spending side. There weren't even any amendments, uh, as far as I could tell, there weren't even any amendments to, uh, to affect uh, the $1.4 billion in FY22 supplemental spending. Um, it's interesting. There's still going to be uh, amendments on the floor today. Um, they considered 50 amendments yesterday, uh, and they're going to uh, discuss two additional amendments to the budget this morning before voting on whether to pass the budget. And then in the chat room, uh, Representative Mike Cronk said he wouldn't be surprised if action is uh, if there's an action to rescind in the Senate today on the PFD. What's your take on on all that right now? There may be. Um, you've got. Um... Bill Wilkowski and Scott uh, Kawasaki were critical votes uh, on the full PFD. It was a 10 to 9 vote. Uh, any vote changing would be problematic. Uh, I've seen uh, a lot of uh, posts. I've, I've heard a lot of chatter uh, uh, criticizing Kawasaki and Wilkowski for that vote. I don't think Wilkowski changes. I doubt Kawasaki changes. Uh, but, uh, but you know, and Donnie Olson was the other. It was seven Republicans, uh, three Democrats. Donnie Olson's the other one. I doubt Donnie changes, uh, but uh, but there may be pressure to do that. The, the 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 one of the other amendments that's yet to come is Donnie Olson's uh, capital budget amendment to add additional funding on top of the funding they already approved yesterday, on top of the six hundred thousand dollars for the diving boards, um, is to add additional money for the Port of Nome and the Port of Anchorage. The Senate. You know, a big difference, the big difference between the House, uh, uh, the, the House Finance uh, Committee substitute on the capital budget and the Senate Finance uh, budget, uh, capital budget are uh, on port funding. Uh, the House uh, Finance uh, has, has much more for port funding, both Anchorage uh, and, uh, and Nome. And Donnie's going to run an amendment today uh, to try to increase the FY23 budget. I think it's the FY23 budget maybe the FY22 supplemental to uh, increase the budget uh, uh, more for, uh, for that capital spending. So, um, you know, we may end up the day with even more spending uh, on the, on the books. And what happens? Um, <laughs> sorry, I'm just, I'm, I'm just shaking my head at this point. Uh, now that it's an omnibus bill, do, what is the effect of that? Do you think as this, the spending goes in there and the full dividend and everything else, What's the effect of the omnibus status where they bundled basically the supplemental, the ca the operating and the capital all into one bill so you can't separate it out? You can't support one and not support something else. What effect do you think that that has on it? Well, I mean, if the, if the House concurs, 
then it won't go to uh, conference uh, and, and you won't have uh, you won't have conference issues, um, uh, any conference issues on, on any side of the spending. Um, if the House doesn't concur, it goes to conference. The, the, the difference, I mean, where the House is upset is that they're not going to get a chance to add their capital budget items. They don't have a capital. There's not going to be a capital budget bill out of the House to uh, to negotiate with. So the Senate will pretty well set the, the agenda on the capital budget uh, items. And that's what the House is upset with. But, you know, it'll 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 if it's not concurred in by the by the House, it'll still go to go, go to conference and it'll be a big bill going uh, going to conference. Let me go backwards here. When you said something, people were like, what? Um, uh, Rick says, excuse me, did you say, thank God that was defeated? That was a discussion on finishing the rail spur uh, in the Matsu. I mean, this is part of the capital infrastructure and doing that, there would be a huge return on investment because it would allow for more things to go straight to the interior and not put all our eggs in one basket, so to speak. There's argument, of course, of being able to move natural gas up north and everything else. So you think that that's a poor investment in the capital budget, or is is this strictly a numbers game? And where you're saying we should be cutting and not ex- and not spending more? What, what's your take on that, Brad? Oh, it's a, it's a numbers game, Michael. I mean, we we've added so much spending to this point that that you know, if Shower didn't propose, if, if Shower came in or anybody came in and said, look, instead of funding this, I I, I want to fund this. I want to replace. This program, you know, for example, the 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 forward funding in oil and gas tax credits that uh, that's that's now embedded in the FY22 supplemental budget. Instead of instead of that, I want to fund this, um, and and that would be you know that'd be fine. Let's let's have a debate about whether what's better for the state, funding this or funding that. We just can't fund everything, and the way Shower did it yesterday was to layer on. Uh, the Massey Rail extension on top of everything else. Instead of instead of saying I want to replace this or I want to pay for it, I want to pay for it in this fashion. He just layered it on top of everything else, and we just we can't afford it. Uh, by the way, return on investment. You know, I chuckle every time somebody says that there is no return to the state on this investment. Right? There are no taxes. There are no revenues that are going to come back to the state on it. It is it is a a funding of private sector gain by public sec by by public sector spending um and and yes there's a return but the return doesn't come to the state it doesn't come to the investor it goes it goes to to private sector so it's uh, it, it it's it's hard to argue it's hard to ever convince me and others that that you know we're talking about great returns from from any of these capital spending but but in 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 particular with respect to the way it played out yesterday, it's the incremental nature of, yeah, let's spend all that and then let's spend this more. We don't have it. If you take out the PFD as a revenue source, as you should, and you take out PFD spending from the budget, we are spending more than, than we have non-PFD revenue to pay for, even in this time of $101 oil prices. So something's got to give. I mean, if you want, if you want the Matsu spend, if you want Matsu rail extension spending, take something else out, at least take out the $600,000 diving boards that they voted for yesterday. <laughs> that doesn't come close to offsetting it, but I mean, it's an right. example. Well, we're spending, we're just, we're just spending more and more and more and more and more and more. And nobody's saying cut this in order to make room for this more important spending. Well, I mean, Shower did put an amendment forward to cut $60 million from the education budget, but that failed by a ton, right? So, I mean, there there are attempts, but the problem is is that the overall, the overall, it seems, momentum and intent is just to spend, not to cut. Exactly right. I mean, exactly right. So, yeah, you put forward a $60 million uh, uh, spending cut, gets defeated, and then you, and then you want to spend $300 million I think that's the number for the Mansi Rail extension. You want to you want to spend you know X amount more uh, for something else. Well, you don't have the room. You lost your you lost the proposal to cut the spending, and now you still but now you still want to to, to put incrementally more on top of it. I mean that's not not to not to get into to part two too quickly, but that's sort of that's sort of my ultimate disappointment yesterday. We are not even even in even after the last decade even after the experience of the last decade, we're not thinking about how to balance this budget long-term. We're just, 
you know, piling up more and more and more and more on top of it uh, without really uh, getting at the core of the problem. Brad Keithley, Alaskans for Sustainable Budgets, uh, is our guest. Um, I mean, I could see at this point, yes, I see a benefit. I see a benefit from the rail. I see that it could be, you know, help for development of resources. Uh, I mean, the Alaska Railroad Corporation would make some money on that. So maybe there'd be a slight return. But I definitely see. But again, I think Brad's argument does hold water in saying basically, we're sp- we're continue- we can't just keep spending more, even though it's a good spend. It's a good, you know, hey, this is a great project. This is a great idea. Yes. But are we just still spending more and more and more? Um, but it is, uh, you know, it, it's this is definitely a difficult thing. Um, if it's if it's a great project, take out a bad project. I mean, yeah. It, 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 do offsets, but but don't just keep piling it on, saying, "Ah, oh, this this next one's a great project too. Let's spend let's spend on it. This six hundred thousand dollars for diving boards. Oh, that's really great. Let's let's spend it too. Well, I mean, it's just- especially since the school districts have got like. I mean, the $54 million here in Anchorage and, and everything else. They couldn't find $600,000 for, first of all, $600,000 for diving boards. Second of all, you got $54 million in all this COVID money. Why don't you use some of that instead of going back to the legislature? But I digress. Brad, quick tease on number two, which, of course, is whether or not we actually ever get a long-range fiscal plan. Oh, uh, yeah, we're going to, it's, it sort of melds into number one, but I got to admit, I'm discouraged uh, from, from this vote yesterday, from the additional spending that got added yesterday. Uh, uh, you're going to hear, uh, you're going to hear a lot of discouragement from me about long range fiscal plan. We just finished up with the number one, which was the budget, which uh, I think the answer, basically the reaction is it's totally out of control. Uh, even if you set aside the PFD, it's still out of control. Um, but, uh, Brad, want, we wanted to talk about a fiscal long-term fiscal plan, which you said tied nicely into number one. Are we going to get one? If we're ever going to have one, what's uh, you you said you were going to, you're discouraged, disgruntled, dauber down. Tell us what's happening here, uh, with your thoughts on the, on the fiscal plan. Let, let me say one thing first. I, I don't think the PFD is out of control. I, I think, no, no, I think we were talking about the budget outside of the PFD, but yeah. Right, right. I think the PFD I mean, I, I divide the way we used to, but before before we started mashing these two together in the middle in the mid twenty teens, in order to create more revenue for the state to spend, I, I I continue to think about the PFD as a separate separate part of the budget, uh, uh, paid for by designated funds that come out of the the permanent fund earnings reserve, paid in accordance with the statute, and I think that I don't think that's out of control. I think maybe that's finally back in control. Because uh, because the Senate proposal is to uh, is to comply with the statute, at least as of last night, the Senate proposal is uh, is to comply with the statute. It's the what I really want people to focus on. It's the rest of spending, the rest of the budget that continues to be out of control. We are spending more even now, even with hundred dollar oil, we are spending more uh, than we have non PFD revenues uh, to pay for. Uh, we are we are in deficit spending. If you take the PFD out of the picture, take PFD revenues, uh, revenues to pay for the PFD out of the picture, take PFD spending out of the issue. We are pay, we are spending more than we have non PFD uh, revenues to pay for, and I think that's just I, I I think that is I think that is the headline of of yesterday's story. You want to spend all this? You're going to need you're going to need revenues uh, to pay for it. Um, and that's, and that's, that's, con- that, that continues to be, uh, uh where we be, where, where we are in, in terms of, in terms of, you know, how this affects your thinking on a long-term fiscal plan this year was the perfect year to transition to a long-term fiscal plan. This year was the perfect year to say, look, we got high revenues this year. Uh, we can fix our long-term uh, fiscal plan without, without, uh, uh, a lot of short-term pain, we can we can look at our long term budget and say yes we've got revenues now uh, but we are still when you look at the long term uh, we are still uh, short of revenues as oil prices go down uh, again as the futures market tells us they're going to uh, we we've, we've got we have deficits that show back up in future years we can set up a structure now uh, to deal with it in a in a in a mature calm manner because we're not in the middle of a crisis right this second. We've put ourselves back in a crisis by all the spending, but you could have said, 
we're not in a, in a crisis this second. So we can set up a structure to deal with, uh, deal with the long term uh, without having to, you know, mash it down on people right now without being in a crisis mode right now. We haven't even come close to doing that. And if we can't do it in a year like this, when we, when we have uh, revenues and we, have, we can see the long-term outlook, we can see oil prices declining as the future, futures market tells us that they're going to, uh, if we can't do it in a year where we have all this information and we have all of, uh, all of these uh, revenues, uh, uh, current revenues coming from current high oil prices, if we can't set up a long-term fiscal plan in a situation like this, I don't know when we're ever going to do it. We've demonstrated we can't do it. We demonstrated throughout the 20 teens we couldn't do it when we were in crisis mode. We just started grabbing PFD revenue, just right, started right. diverting PFD revenue. Right. And, and now we're in a situation where we don't have to grab PFD revenues, where we can, we can comply with the statute and we can set up a long-term fiscal plan to deal with the situation that's evolving out there. We have to keep spending down, but we, we can set it up. And, 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 we, and we haven't done it now. So, you know, it's, it's a little discouraging in terms of thinking about when we're ever going to get to a long-term fiscal plan. We can't do it when we're, we, we, we've demonstrated we can't do it when we're in crisis mode. Now we can't, now we've demonstrated we can't do it when we're in flush mode. I don't know when, when the circumstances ever develop again to give us the opportunity to develop a long-term plan. Do you think, well, I mean, I guess it comes back to what we were talking about yesterday with Roger Holland. We've changed out two-thirds of the legislature in the last five years, and yet we've got the same handful of players, five, six, seven people who are, you know, been there for years, been there for decades, some of them. Uh, they're in control of the of the leadership of these different bodies. If those people got changed out, do you think that there's a chance, or is there even a chance of those people being changed out at this point? Michael, I would, I would, I would have said before yesterday's votes, I would have said, yeah, there's a chance because we got some good rock rib solid uh, fiscal conservatives uh, in the Senate that are uh, that are going to vote the right way and they're going to do the right thing. And if they, if we can just get more of those, uh, and then combine them with Willikowski and Donnie and uh, and and Kawasaki over on the Democrat side on the PFD issue, if we can just get more of those. We can get this back under control, but it was the Republicans who passed the six hundred thousand dollars for uh, for uh, uh, the uh, uh, the the Anchorage School District uh, uh, diving boards. It's the Republicans who who didn't make the amendments to to, to reduce uh, FY twenty two supplemental spending. It's the Republicans who didn't make the amendments to uh, to reduce FY twenty three spending. So it's I it's the it's the and it was the solid conservative. I mean, you look at that vote on the six hundred thousand dollars for the diving board. That tells you right there that that Republicans, even even the conservative Republicans, can't get themselves under control. This so this is very reminiscent of the uh, of the vetoes by Dunleavy, and then the Republicans in the House uh, basically saying, "Oh yeah, that's the vetoes are all except for this one. This is in my backyard. We can't do that one. We can't do." I mean, we saw the same kind of thing happen in the House minority, even where they had the chance to hold the line on things like, you know, reverse sweep and timing and 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 everything else. And yet even some of them caved on these uh, on these same type of uh, uh, same type of issues where it was something in their district or something like that, where they're all about cuts in fiscal conservancy unless it affects their districts directly. Yeah, exactly right, Michael. I, and And as I say, it sort of creates a sense of despair about getting to a long-term fiscal plan. Yeah, yet people talk a good game. People talk a good game about, yes, I'm gonna do that. Yes, I'm gonna do that. Yes, I'm gonna hold the line here. Yes, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold the line there. And then you get to these floor boats, you get to these amendments, you get to the $600,000 for the diving boards. And by gosh, you know, all of those good intentions go out the window and the boats then pile on on top of additional spending and the amendments aren't there to reduce uh, spending other places and then you know the FY22 supplemental gets stuffed it's they talk a good game and and if you believe the talk you believe it's possible to to achieve uh, uh, a conservative long-term fiscal plan but the votes are telling a different story when, when it comes time when the rubber meets the road in terms of the votes on the floor uh, those votes are telling a different story Brad Keithley is our guest Alaskans for sustainable budgets, Brad. We got about we got about a minute here, so I'm just going to let you uh, 
I'll let you off the chain on this. And if you want to wrap up on this and then anything you want to tease, uh, uh, we'd love to hear it. Well, I just, uh, I, 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 we need a long-term fiscal plan. I think that, I think the, the fiscal policy study group outlined a great one. Uh, I think House Ways and Means is at fault for not taking it up and not pressing it forward. That's what they were there to do. They were there to come up with a long-term plan, and they came up with another one that was just dependent on cutting the PFD more and more and more. Um, we need to find a way to get back to to that long-term fiscal plan that the, what the what the fiscal policy study group uh, did. Um, we need to find a working group did. We need to find a way to yeah. get people to clamp down and not do these six hundred thousand dollar votes anymore. We're just winning friends and influencing people here at this point. Uh, but it is, it's frustrating when you got people who, be, you know, who beat the chest and say, I'm your fiscal conservative choice, but I'm going to go ahead and vote for, you know, AstroTurf fields in, you know, Barrow or something like that. I mean, you know, it's, this is the same kind of stuff we saw back in the teens when the state was flush with money and they were building things everywhere, right? I mean, oh, we got to do this. We got to do that. We got to build a new engineering building and we got... Well, they got an astroturf field. We should get an astroturf field, and we should do all this. I mean, that was the that was the the soup du jour during that period of time. I can't tell you how many astroturf fields were built across the state uh, at the top. You know, at the cost of two or three million bucks a piece. Uh, some of the communities built them on their own. Good for them. I'm I'm happy for that. But a lot of them were like, "Oh, we need state money to do that." I remember the Fairbanks North Star Borough is that way. They wanted to build uh, two or three. I mean, at some point, I'm just like, "You guys are insane, insane, <laughs> absolutely crazy." Um, but this is part of the problem when, you know, they're like, oh, that's not a big deal. I'll just vote for that to move on to something else. There's just, it's crazy. It is Michael. And, and, and you're exactly right. This, the, the diving boards is, is, is exactly the parallel example to, to those AstroTurf football fields that I went on and on and on and on about for years and years and years. I mean, you got to stop folks. You got to stop spending, um, it, or else you got to pay for it. And, and the problem is we've got a legislature, even the Republicans, we've got a legislature that thinks they can spend and they and and somebody and, and somebody else is going to pay for it. I tell you who's going to pay for it in the long term is going to be additional PFD cuts. I mean, the part we didn't get to out of out of the second part was, was is is what's the prospect for a long term fiscal plan and what happens if we don't get to a long term fiscal plan? Right. The answer is we're going to hit PFD cuts. Right. Oil prices are going back down. Look at the futures market. Spending is going up. Look at the inflation rates. Yep. I mean, we we are not, this is sort of a sweet spot for a couple of years, maybe. Uh, but we start, oil prices start going back down after that. When you look at the futures market, spending start, spending goes up. When you look at the uh, at inflation rates, we we are facing, still facing difficult choices in the years ahead. And rather than deal with those, rather than set up a structure now when we're flush, when we got the ability, when we got the time, when we're not in crisis mode, rather than set up uh, a structure to deal with that, we're, we're just, you know, we're blowing it. And, right. and so what happens when we get back to those years when oil prices go back down, when spending is being driven up by inflation? What happens? PFD is going to be cut again. Right. And 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 well, we, we, get didn't the old- set, we didn't set up substitute revenues. We didn't set up more strictures on spending, the PFD is going to be cut again. Right. Well, we end up with the ultimate degradation of the PFD to where it basically is all consumed. I mean, it, that's that's really the law. Without a fiscal plan, and especially without constitutionalizing the PFD and taking that argument off the table and putting that money out of reach, they'll continue to draw from that pot of money as long as it's there until it's gone, and then they'll be like, well, now we need taxes. I mean, this is the same thing Roger Holland was saying, right? I mean, it was the same thing. PFD t- cuts and taxes when we're when we're, we're when we're hurting, but when we're flush, it's PFD cuts and ta- that is the answer. PFD cuts and taxes because they want to spend more, and then that includes the six hundred thousand dollars for the for the diving boards, which was a Roger Holland amendment. I know I mean, exactly. I mean, that's the that's the irony of all this, right? Yeah. No, I'm 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 a little shocked at that, but again, just as shocked as I was when a lot of the Republicans in the House basically rolled over and wet on themselves when the vetoes were up there and they could have sustained them and they didn't because, well, my community could be hurt. Well, do we really need it if that's the question? I mean, at that point, so if they, if you say you're for cuts, you got to realize that everybody's ox is going to get gored in the cuts one way or the other. And you're going to have to tell your constituencies, sorry, buttercup. Remember when I said that I would cut spending? That includes the spending here. That's what it is. 
And maybe it was a good program, and maybe we can reinstitute it later on. But if we don't get the fiscal house in order now, it's going to kill us. Yeah, and and even even holding the line. I mean, the six hundred thousand dollars was incremental on top of everything else that had been that had put in the FY twenty two supplemental in the FY twenty three budget. On top of everything else that was in the one point four billion dollar FY twenty two supplemental, and the seven hundred seven hundred million dollar additional spending or nine hundred million dollar additional spending that's in the uh, that's, that's in the FY twenty three budget. The six hundred thousand dollars was on top of everything else. Showers. Uh, Matsu Railroad extension would have been on top of everything else. It's just, you got to hold the line. I mean, if if you don't like what it's being spent on, replace it. Find something else. Say, let's spend the $600,000 here instead of, instead of there. You just don't pile up one thing on top of another on top of another. Hold the line. Even if you can't get spending under control, at least hold the line on not adding additional spending on top of it. So th- this is all going to hit the governor's desk. Any thoughts on whether or not, I mean, is Dudley going to be like, well, I'll veto this, 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 and this. Do you think he's going to veto some of the supplemental? Do you think he'll veto? I mean, what are your thoughts on, on, on that quickly here? Well, I, I, I hope he does. Um, frankly, I think he's giving Charlie Pierce uh, the, uh, the campaign uh, 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 theme that, that Charlie needs if the governor doesn't veto a bunch of this stuff. Uh, if the governor doesn't get spending back under control, I'm just I'm disappointed in the legislature at this point. But but yes, I, I think the governor should. Hopefully the governor will. But if not, Charlie Pierce has just gotten his campaign issue that he's going to run on over and over and over and over and over for the for the remainder of the campaign. Yeah, no, I, I agree with that. All right. Brad Keithley, Alaskans for Sustainable Budgets. My friend, thank you for coming on board, as always. Uh, like you said, you're a little disappointed. I mean, but you know, it's, it's understandable. I think we're all a little frustrated at this point. Uh, but again, I guess the bright spot is the PFD. We'll see what happens with that in the conference or whether or not it gets accepted or not. Brad, thank you for being part of it today. Michael, as always, thanks for having me. Appreciate you uh, coming on board and, uh, and joining us as, uh, as always. Well, that's a wrap for another week's edition of the weekly top three from Alaskans for sustainable budgets. Thank you again for joining us. Remember that you can find past episodes on our YouTube, SoundCloud, Spotify, and Substack pages. And keep track of us during the week on Facebook and Twitter. This has been Brad Keithley, Managing Director of Alaskans for Sustainable Budgets. We look forward to you joining us again next week on the Weekly Top 3.